So a lot of the places that we normally play like bars and clubs and other venues are opening up, but it's been a while since you've performed and gigged in front of a live audience. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to shake the dust off and get back to gigging without missing a beat. So let's get to it. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. So going from gigging regularly or semi-regularly to not gigging at all, or at least not gigging for extended periods of time is a very significant thing for us musicians. For some of us musicians, the pandemic may be the longest break that we've taken from gigging in our entire careers. And just like taking an extended break from working out, it can be really difficult to jump right back into it. There's something to be said about a drummer who has to pack his hardware bag in his car when he hasn't done it in a long time. There's something to be said about a vocalist having to carry a three to four hour show when they haven't done it in a long time. There are many things I could name like this, but the truth of the matter is a lot of the things that we took for granted that you know we took as easy, we took those things for granted and now getting back into it is going to prove to be a lot more difficult than we remember. I mean, when you're getting back into it, a three to four hour gig feels more like a seven to eight hour gig. But thankfully, there are some ways to minimize this and in some cases completely eliminate this struggle. And one way to do that is you have to practice. Now, this is one of the most important things that you can do to get yourself back into the swing of gigging and performing. Do not make the mistake of just jumping back into gigging and thinking that everything that you knew before and how you performed it and all of these kinds of things I know quite a few musicians right now that have just jumped back into gigging and have crashed and burned because they just assumed because they've done it so much in the past that everything was going to automatically come back to them. And it didn't happen like that. Even on the things and on the music that you already know, you have to practice that too. I don't care how many times you played Mr. Magic, Sweet Caroline, Brown Eyed Girl, Don't Stop Believing, Living on a Prayer locked out of heaven, get lucky, or whatever. You need to practice these songs again. You don't even realize just how much of playing that stuff over the years is just muscle memory. And it's, you know, your ability of your muscles just to kind of recall the way that you played or sung those songs. Now that you haven't performed them in a while, that muscle memory is gone. And now you have to actually depend on this and you haven't depend on that before with these particular songs. So you're going to find yourself in some trouble if you don't practice them. So definitely pull out some old set lists, pull up those songs, go through them, go through the, you know, the verses and the choruses and the bridges and all of that kind of stuff to make sure that you have that stuff down. And it would also probably be beneficial for you to pull up a list of say the top 10 or 20 most popular songs in the genre that you play currently so that you get familiar with some of the newer tunes that people may be playing in other bands. But you definitely have to practice. Now, right before we get to the next tip, if you're getting value out of this video so far, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video. Go ahead and do that now. That lets me know that you really appreciate this type of content and it lets me know the type of content to make for you in the future. Now, another thing that you need to do to get back into the swing of things is prep your gear. Now your gear is probably the most important thing when it comes to tools of the trade and your gear should always be properly maintained and cared for at all times. And we musicians cannot underestimate the effects of what happens to our gear when it's just been sitting for long periods of time and not being used. And this is the case for a lot of musicians right now. A lot of us haven't used our gear in over a year. Our gear in over a year. I didn't try to make that rhyme. And the effects of this are much worse if your gear hasn't been stored properly. You know, things like condensation and rust kick in, not to mention, you know, the effects that the weather just in and of itself has on your gear. So now is the time to change your guitar or your bass strings, you know, change your drum heads, get some new sticks, wipe down your keyboards, pull the tops off those microphones and wash the little foam parts and the metal part that's in there and change out or at least make sure all your cables are still functional. 
you want to plug up your gear and make sure it's all still working. And as a bonus for this, what you also want to do is actually pick up your gear because I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot heavier than what you remember it being. So you definitely want to be doing everything you can to prep your gear and make sure it's in working condition. Now, another thing you need to be doing is updating your branding materials. You know, a lot of musicians have let their branding materials simply go to waste. And I'm talking everything from websites to, you know, physical brochures and business cards. Now is the time to overhaul these things and update them. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you know the importance of a website. So make sure your website is updated, updated with some new pictures and you know, some new coming soon type of dates and material. Get some new business cards made. Now is the time to do that too. You can also update your social media. You know, post some updated 2021 pictures and let everyone know that you're still here. You're still a band. You're still a musician. You're still an artist and you're performing and make sure all of your contact information on all of these things is up to date. You know, your email address and your phone number, make sure all of those things are updated on your websites, on your social media and all of that. But now is definitely the time to be updating your branding materials. And another thing you want to be doing right now is making calls. Now you probably haven't kept much in touch with a lot of the older venues that you used to play pre pandemic. And this is somewhat understandable. And you also probably haven't reached out to any potential clients in a while, but now is the time to start doing these things. Sometimes the only difference between you getting an older gig or, you know, a new gig and not getting those things is making a simple phone call. So pick up the phone and call some of these older venues that you used to play at pre pandemic and some newer ones as well and ask them if they are, you know, starting to have live music in their spots yet. If they are, let them know that, you know, you're here and you're ready to perform. If they aren't doing so right now, ask them when they will be or when they're planning to, and then let them know you'll be calling them back closer to that time. And if it's the case that they aren't yet, in the meantime, you can send them some of your updated branding materials that we just talked about and connect with them also on social media. If you're performing somewhere else and you've taken some pictures or have some video and you've posted it on your social media, tag those venues in those posts so that they see them. What you're doing in this case is basically solidifying a network of, you know, clubs and bars and venues and all of these kinds of things that you can have to pull from. You have a list of people that you know that you've already reached out to. You've already tagged them in a post so they kind of know what it is that you do a little bit. So that makes it a lot easier when you have to make a phone call to them and say, hey, I'm such and such band. I've been tagging you on this and they can say, oh, OK, we remember you from this post. You see how that works? So one of the things that you want to be doing while shaking the dust off and getting back into gigging is making phone calls. So pick up the phone and make some calls today. And I saved this next tip for last, but it's definitely not least. And that is you want to protect yourself. I know this goes without saying because a lot of us musicians are smart and you know, a lot of us don't need to hear this and I get it, but I'll say it for those that, you know, are sitting way in the back in the cheap seats. It is crucially important right now to be cognizant and help protect yourself and others around you. You know, although things are starting to get better and they're looking up, we're still dealing with this pandemic and now is not the time to get relaxed. So just do your part in helping to maintain the safety of yourself and other people and other musicians around you. And that means all of the things that you already know, like the, you know, social distancing and wearing masks and washing your hands and things like that. But specifically for us musicians, it means things like making sure you're wiping down your equipment regularly, you know, wiping down your microphones, you know, limiting interaction with audience members while you're at the bar on break. There are many things that you can do and each situation is going to be different. And again, I'm not here to tell you what to do or how to do it. You know, you can make the best decision for yourself. But the thing is, again, just try to maintain a level of safety and care for yourself and others around you until we get to a time to where we're not dealing with this type of stuff anymore. So I'm not going to get any further into that. I think, you know, us musicians are you know fairly intelligent and smart, at least in my opinion. 
and we know what to do in a lot of these situations. I just wanted to be on record in saying that this is something that you probably should be thinking about when getting back to gigging and putting yourself out there and you know thinking about what you're gonna do and how you're gonna interact when you're outperforming. But the question is for you, what are some things that you are doing or that you're planning on doing to get back into the swing of gigging and performing in front of a live audience? Jump down in the comment section and let me know. I definitely wanna hear your thoughts on that. And listen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope that you found it helpful. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on this video. And here are some other videos that you can check out right now.